Despite Marie's protests, her son Roger was born in prison seven years ago this month. For a mother and son, such a beginning promised a future of disappointment and failure. But Marie was ambitious, smart, and determined to buy her respectability for her son at any price. You'll learn what happened in a minute. You've told enough story for tonight, son. Oh, it's been fun, Mrs. Baker. He was telling us how his father won the war. Well, he can finish the rest of the battle in his dreams. Run up to bed now, darling. Good night, Miss Kilborn, Mr. Wilson. Good night, Roger. Good night. Good night, Roger. His son is very proud of his father. Roger's father was killed in the war. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, if you'll excuse me, I must tell my husband you're both here. He wanted to speak to you right away. Thanks, Mrs. Baker. Let's go get some punch, huh? Okay. <laughs> Bakers are a wonderful family, aren't they? Yeah. State University couldn't get a better man. Steve, do you think the Board of Regents will elect Professor Baker president? I hope so, Laurie. We've certainly published enough articles promoting it. I can imagine that... What is it? That man coming in. See him? Yes. His name's Jack Coleman. There was an item on him in the paper a few days ago. Just finished a stretch at the state pen. He's a confidence man. What's a man like that doing at the baker's reception? I'd give a week's salary to know. Carl said he'd be right over. Hello, Marie. Surprised? How about some introductions? Well, uh, this is Bob Winters, Miss Kilborn, and Mr. Wilson of the Illustrated Press. How do you do? How do you do? I'm an old friend of Marie's. Real old Hummery. Now, you go on and entertain your guests. We'll talk about old times later. Glad to meet you. Hello, Mr. Wilson. Professor Baker. Miss Kilborn? Hello, Professor. Just wanted to thank you for that wonderful write-up last Sunday. It was most kind of you. Oh, that's all right, Professor. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Baker, I wonder if I might speak to you about uh, Mr. Winters. Oh, uh, Carl, Professor Wilkins was very anxious to talk to you. We may be pulling the plug out of a hornet's nest. <laughs> I thought you'd gone to bed. I wanted to have a little chat with you, my dear. You seem so tense all evening. Your imagination is showing again, Professor. Marie, who was that stranger I saw you talking to? Oh, just an old friend. He's in town for a few days, so he dropped by to say hello. You seemed so flustered when he arrived. Well, wouldn't you be flustered if a flame from your youth walked in the door? <laughs> I concede. Coming to bed, dear? You go ahead. I want to do a little straightening up first. Oh, 
Don't do that. Don't ever do that again. I've waited over seven long years to do it. Respectability hasn't changed you any. You're still the best. What do you want? Why did you come back? Is that any way to treat your husband? I'm Mrs. Carl Baker now. You were Mrs. Jack Coleman? There was a divorce, you know that. You always belong to me, honey. You always will. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong. There was a time when I loved you, Jack. Loved you enough to go to prison. I didn't mean for them to mix you up in that. Things happen. Now it's over. And it's all over with us, too. Give me a chance to make it up to you, honey. I told you it's all over. You love this guy? Very much. Excuse me for not offering best wishes. I guess I'm just not that big. Goodbye, Jack. Just a minute. Seven years in jail is a long time. It should have earned me something. I hoped it'd be you. We've been through that. Then there's got to be a substitute. Say that 10,000 bucks. What? You know, the money we saved before we were arrested. Jack, when I got out of prison, things weren't easy. Oh, I tried everything. I went to our friends. No one would help. In desperation, I used that money to start over again. That's nice for you. It wasn't for me. It was for... for someone much more important. Well, I'm not interested in your favorite charities, Marie. If you're not in my future, the money is. I want it in 24 hours. But there isn't any money. And let me put it another way. Either you or the money leaves town with me. Or everybody gets introduced to Mary Coleman, prisoner. Number 621475. Or was it six? You'd ruin my husband's career. And my son, you'd destroy his life too. Your son, I don't know. Your husband I'd like to hurt most of all. See what I can do about the money. I'm staying at the Kingman Hotel. I'll wait to hear from you. Marie, if it made any difference to you, even I might have turned respectable. Juana rode his black stallion to the top of the hill, then looked back to the deserted campsite. He reflected sadly on the parting. Makoba Moy was dead now, but Kawana knew his father had been carried to the great hunting ground on the winged horse. They would meet again. The end. Here I come home after a hard day of shopping to find you two loafing your time away. <laughs> Mom, there was an Indian Kawana Yes, and, I know, um... darling. But there's also a spelling lesson waiting for you upstairs in your room. So run along. Well, all right. See you later. He's a fine boy. I couldn't love him more if he were my own. He is your own, Carl. Maybe not by blood, but in every other way, he's your son. Remember that. I never forget it for a minute, my dear. Sometimes I think it would have been wiser if we'd told him from the beginning that you were his father. <coughs> Nonsense. He evidently had a father to be proud of. Oh, there was a phone call for you while you were out that Bob Winters fellow seemed anxious to talk to you. Just who is this dark shadow out of your past? Why do you say it like that? Oh, I was only teasing. Marie, is something wrong? You've been acting so strangely since the reception. Possibly. It's all the entertaining and waiting to hear if you're going to get that appointment to the university. I suppose it has been trying for you. But it's a big step forward for us, worth the headaches. Big step forward in every way but money. Well, if I'd been interested in money, I wouldn't have become a teacher. Sometimes money can be important. When the urgency is great, the money is usually there. Is it, Carl? Suppose... Suppose we needed $10,000 right away. Well, your analogy is a little unfair. No one could expect a college professor to produce that much money. No. No, I don't suppose they could. Where are you going, dear? It's almost time for dinner.
beginning to think you wouldn't come. That's why I called. I talked to Carl. There's no chance of my getting $10,000 for you. Too bad. Jack, give me a little more time. I've already given the state seven years of my time. They don't have any time left to spare. And you've just made my decision for me. Which is? I'll go home and pack. Like a high school girl kissing goodnight on her first date. I've been Mrs. Carl Baker for a long time. There's a train out of here at noon tomorrow. I've already got space. Carl 12, compartment C. Jack, I'll be anything you want me to be. All I ask is that you leave Carl and Roger alone. Just promise me that. To get you back, baby, I promise to stop breathing. dying man pleaded for help. I'm convinced that tying a bow tie is a talent I shall never possess. Maybe bow ties are the reason why they were invented. I can think of a couple of better reasons. Feeling better after your walk last night, darling? How can I eat breakfast alone this morning? Because I have an early meeting with the Board of Regents, young man. Your mother ate with me. It's okay, but Mom, I finished the blueberry muffins. Don't forget to get some today. Oh, I've got to be going. Goodbye, darling. Don't forget tonight I make my acceptance speech. I want you to hear it. I wish you could be there. There's no place I'd rather be than with you. Well, I'll see you both later. The next time we meet, you may address me as Mr. President of State University. Carl, another goodbye kiss, huh? Well, it might ruffle my dignity, but... Just as good as in the movies, eh, Roger? Give me cowboys and Indians any day. Bye, son. How about a cowboy giving his mother a kiss? Oh, I mean a real one. The kind she won't forget for a long time. Oh, Ma, cowboys don't kiss like that. Well, couldn't you sort of make an exception for a girl who kind of goes for you? There's the school bus. Gotta hurry. Darling, Mommy's going away for a while. If... if it's a long while, will you mind your daddy, Carl, and make him proud of you? Okay, but I gotta go. The bus. And remember, sweetie, your Mommy loved you very, very much. Just be sure you're back by supper time. Don't have to do without the blueberry muffins. It's a pretty fantastic story, Lori. Steve, I have the proof right here. Here's Roger's birth certificate, here are divorce papers, and here is the court order granting Marie a change of name from Coleman to Palmer. Marie certainly did a good job of covering up. Good enough to allow Roger and herself to mix in the best circles. That's where she met Professor Baker. And Coleman obviously came here to blackmail her. With the professor up for presidency of State University, she's ripe pickings. Sure, but can we prove it? Maybe we can. This woman-to-woman -woman technique of yours seems to be getting results. So get going, Curly, and good luck. Hey, wait a minute. I have work to do right here. And where was I going? As soon as you're free, grab a cab to the Baker's and turn on that charm, Curly. Maybe Marie Baker will talk to you. Yeah, just maybe. <sighs> May I speak with you a moment? Well, I was just leaving. Oh, looks like you were planning an extended trip. I am, and my train leaves at 12, so if you don't mind... I... Mrs. Baker, I'll come right to the point. I know who you were before you met Professor Baker. And I also know that your friend, Mr. Winters, is really Jack Coleman. How did you find out? 
doesn't matter. The important thing is that Mr. Wilson and I want to help you. We know that Jack Coleman is trying to blackmail you. And if you cooperate with us, we can put him where he belongs. There's no blackmail involved. And there's nothing you can do. I'm uh, going away with Jack. What about your family? It's my family I'm thinking of. He's promised to leave them alone if I go with him. It's hard to believe that a father could do that to his own son. He doesn't know it's his own son. He'll never know. So if you'll excuse me, I, I have to leave. Steve Wilson, please. Oh, Steve, this is Laurie. I have the pieces to our puzzle. No, I can't tell you now. Meet me at the corner of Gilroy and, and Fourth, and I'll explain it to you then. Okay, bye. <laughs> My name is Steve Wilson. I remember you. We met at the party. I wanted to talk to you. No time. I'm leaving town in a few minutes. You'd better take time. What's the idea? Look, I happen to know your real name's Jack Coleman. I also know why you came to town and who's leaving with you. You should charge money for telling fortunes. Coleman, I've learned a lot about you. You're not as bad as you'd like people to believe. I thought you might be man enough to change your mind and leave town alone. Sorry to disappoint you. What good does it do you to take a woman who doesn't love you? Look, when I was a kid, I learned one thing. Some people get eggs in their beer without trying. Others have got to fight even to get the beer. To me, second best is better than nothing. Ever meet Marie's son? No. Fine boy, bright, got a swell future. Good for him. Happen to know who his father is? That's usually the duty of husbands. Marie was married to Carl Baker. The boy is seven years old. Use a little arithmetic and see which husband of Marie's you're talking about. You're lying. Look for yourself. Birth certificate from the hospital ward of state prison for women. A son born to Mrs. Marie Coleman. Why'd you do this? I thought you'd like to be proud of yourself for a change. If Marie goes with you, Roger loses his mother. Well? What do you want me to do? Turn handsprings over a kid I've never seen? This happens to be your kid. And the one he doesn't even know he's Jack Coleman's kid. He thinks his father was killed in the war, that he died a hero. He's very proud of his father. Get out of here. First, there's someone I'd like you to meet. Roger? This is the gentleman I was telling you about. Mr. Woodson and Miss Kilburn came to get me from school. Wanted me to meet you, Mr. Winters. Mr. Winters is leaving town today. We wanted you to meet him before he left, since... since I think he was a friend of your dad's. You knew my dad? Yeah. I knew you did. He was a great guy, wasn't he? What makes you think so? My mommy told me. What did your mommy tell you? That he was kind and brave and a real hero. Roger, Mr. Winters knew your father better than anybody else. Maybe he can answer the question you asked us earlier. I want to be a doctor, Mr. Winters. Do you think my dad would have liked that? I care what your dad would have thought. He's dead, isn't he? I guess he is, really, but not to me. My dad won't ever be dead to me. That's why I always carry this. It's a letter from him. Mommy said he wrote it from the battlefield just before he was killed. Would you like to read it, Mr. Winters? My dearest son, during a man's life, there are times when he can foresee the future. I'm quite sure I will never see you again and there are so many things I plan to talk to you about. All the things that make for a good life.
train leaves in a few minutes. We'll drive you to the station. Maybe you'd like to even talk to Roger a little more. We uh, dropped Mr. Winters at the bus station. He said to give you this, that it would explain everything. Dear Marie, today for the first time I had an opportunity to meet and visit with your son. Roger's a fine boy. I'm sure his father would have been very proud of him. And he spoke a lot about his father. What a fine man he was. How he wanted to be just like him when he grew up. Roger needs you, Marie. He'll need you for many years. In fact, if Roger's father was half as fine a man as Roger says he was, I'm sure he would have advised you to go home. Go home to your husband and your son. Always, Bob Winters. P.S. When the time comes, Tell Roger it's a safe bet that his father would have been very proud of him becoming a doctor. We'll take your bags to our car. Oh, I... I want to make a stop on the way home. Sure, where? The bakery. I've got to get some blueberry muffins. You make it sound very important. It is important, Mr. Wilson. The most important thing in the world. Blueberry muffins. So, ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pride and a deep-rooted knowledge of my responsibilities that I accept the presidency of this great university. My goal will be to always keep foremost in the minds of men the youth of our great nation. Professor Baker will make a fine president. You very well. Well, Laurie, we've got a newspaper to get out. Thanks for the party, Mrs. Baker. Oh, it was my pleasure. I wanted to celebrate Carl's appointment with good friends. You two are my very best friends. What about Mr. Winters? Isn't he your best friend too, Mommy? Well, Mr. Winters is more than a friend, Roger. He's sort of a member of the family. Yeah, I bet he and Dad were a lot alike. They were alike, Roger. A lot of light.